The Speed Count is a card counting system that claims to be, quote, the easiest advantage blackjack method ever developed. They state that it will forever change the way the average player plays blackjack. In this video, I'm gonna explain what the Speed Count is, how it works, and how well it performs. Hey, I'm Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship, and for over 15 years, I've been a professional blackjack player. I've run teams responsible for being casinos for millions of dollars, and for over 10 years, I've been running Blackjack Apprenticeship, training others how to beat blackjack for profit. Now, a number of years ago, I was putting on a training, we call them blackjack boot camps, and one of the attendees was a CFO of a pharmaceutical industry, and he had recently retired and cashed out and had plenty of money. And he said to me, Colin, my goal is to not lose more than a million dollars playing blackjack. He said, if I lose over a million dollars, I'm probably gonna have to slow down. And he didn't want to have to learn high-low because it would be a little bit harder for him to learn. Instead, he wanted to use the speed count. Before I explain how the speed count works, let me just explain that at its foundation, any card counting system is trying to track low cards relative to high cards. Low cards are bad for a player. High cards, tens and aces, are valuable for the player. That's when the dealer busts more often. That's when we get more blackjacks. And so that's when we gain the advantage. There are dozens of card counting systems out there with varying levels of complexity. But the problem with a really complex system is it takes more time to learn, it's harder to implement a casino, and there's more opportunity for error when you're using a complex system. On the other extreme, some people have tried to come up with simpler systems so that it's easier to learn and you can just start using it sooner in a casino. Enter the speed count. The speed count was developed by a guy named Dan Pronovost and Henry Tamborin. I've met Henry, he's a nice guy. And they wanted to create a system that was a lot easier than high-low so that someone could learn it really quickly. So rather than tracking high cards relative to low cards, you only count low cards. Then at the end of every round, you subtract one for every player, including the dealer. So if there's two players and a dealer, you'd subtract three at the end of every round. And what this is doing is it's taking advantage of the fact that on average, there are 2.7 cards played for every hand. So on average, there's going to be one high card dealt to in every hand, players and dealer. Let me show you guys an example here. We're gonna count just the small cards. We got one, two, three, and then there, he's gonna stay. We're still at three. We got three, but then we're gonna subtract for the three hands that were played and we'd be at a running zero. The idea is if you're counting the low cards and then subtracting one for on average one high card for every hand, then you will know when there is a surplus of high cards remaining to be dealt in the shoe, you have the advantage, you bet more. But here's the catch. There are times when both small and high cards are coming out at the same rate, but there's just a surplus of sevens, eights, and nines remaining to be dealt in the shoe. In those situations with the speed count, you're actually raising your bets when you do not have the advantage. But with all that being said, we trust in the math. So let's look at the math of how the speed count performs. I ran a bunch of computer simulations using CV data, which was created by Norm Wattenberger. A special shout out to Norm. Congratulations on being nominated for the Blackjack Hall of Fame recently. And thank you for your software and your help with this. I couldn't have run these simulations without you. So with a fairly common Blackjack game using a pretty aggressive one to 20 bet spread, the speed count produced an expected hourly win rate of $14 per hour. With a $50,000 bankroll, which I'm sure most people watching this don't all have a $50,000 bankroll, this still came out to a risk of ruin of nearly 17%. What that means is one out of every six speed count card counters would lose their entire $50,000 bankroll while generating less than $15 an hour in expected value. Yikes. Now let's compare that to the exact same bet spread using high-low with the deviations that I teach through Blackjack Apprenticeship. That same bet spread would yield $104 an hour of expected value with only 2.5% risk of ruin. So $15 an hour with 17% risk of ruin versus $104 an hour with 2.5% risk of ruin. Just for fun, I thought I'd also compare the speed count to high-low at a really great shoe game like you might find in a quality high limit room. So let's say that you're a high roller and you wanna learn card counting, but you want it to be really simple. Well, with a $100,000 bankroll, the speed count could generate about $59 an hour with a little under 3% risk of ruin. 
But with those same rules and $100,000 bankroll with high-low and the blackjack apprenticeship deviations, you would generate over $500 an hour in EV with that same 3% risk of ruin. So $59 per hour with speed count or over $500 an hour with high-low. So what does this tell us? Well, the speed count technically can give you positive EV. However, it is just a fraction of what you could generate with something more traditional like high-low, which is what I teach. Not only that, but your risk is gonna be through the roof with a speed count. And anybody that's played blackjack as a card counter for any length of time knows that not only do we wanna generate EV, but we have to manage our risk. So you're gonna have really high risk with the speed count, or you're gonna have a hard time controlling your risk. And the long run is gonna be incredibly long. It's gonna be hard to get to the long run where you are sure that you've seen those profits. As far as a simplified card counting system goes, the speed count did drastically outperform the ACE-5 count. I've done a video on the ACE-5 count that you can check out. But when I tried to use the same criteria that I used for the speed count with the ACE-5 count, I couldn't even get positive EV and the risk of ruin with the ACE-5 count was 100%. That's how bad the ACE-5 count is. My advice, if you want to beat the casinos at blackjack, don't cut corners and use one of these simplified counts. Use a count that you know will gain the edge. I've been teaching high-low for over a decade. It's what my teams have used to win millions of dollars. It's what teams like the Highlanders and the MIT team have used to win millions and millions of dollars but you've got to put in the time, you've got to master it, and you can't use one of these simplified weak card counting systems. If you don't believe you can master high-low, you can try to learn KO where you don't have to use any true count conversion, but if you don't think you can learn one of those systems, you really shouldn't be getting into card counting. There's a level of skill needed to do this. If you can't do that, you're just not gonna make money as a card counter. If you want some more tips about mastering the high-low card counting system, I've got a video with a bunch of tips on how to learn card counting faster. And if you want to learn more about card counting and how to beat casinos for money, we have a free card counting mini course that you can check out here. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.